Hi, my name is Emily Crow from Crochet Creations. I am in the back of my car because this is where the lighting was best. And I'm here with my little one. She is right next to me. And we are going to head into Michael's. So if you are new here, my name is Emily Crow from Crochet Creations. I'm a maker and designer of crochet and knit wear and other goods. I make classic pieces that fit in with a modern lifestyle. My daughter is very loud. <laughs> She's so cute. You might see a little bit of her in this vlog. I like to make videos on yarn content, day in the life videos, work at home mom style videos, process vlogs, tutorials, podcasts. So if any of that sounds like something you'd be interested in, I would love if you could subscribe and hit that bell notification so that you are notified whenever I come out with a new video. I thought it would be so fun to do a little yarn shopping vlog and I got this idea, I was at Michael's, which is a craft store in the US, and I was there just a couple weeks ago and I saw that they have sock yarn. And I bought some sock yarn a long time ago, like two or three years ago, one random skein once, way before I even knew how to make socks. It's been a long time since I've even bothered looking at sock yarn there and I was really surprised by the selection that they had and so I thought it would be fun to take you along on a little vlog to see what they have here at Michael's. Then I can kind of take it home and try it out, let you know a little bit of review. A lot of sock yarns that I use are more expensive and so it's nice to have a more budget friendly option that can still be just as good and just as beautiful as the nicer quality yarns, especially for someone who's on a budget. I'm thinking about making some socks for the nieces and the nephew. And I have my little one here as our co-pilot. We're gonna take a little trip into Michael's, see their sock yarns, get a couple things, and then I will try them out making some socks and let you know what I think of them. Probably I will also try and visit... Really? Probably I will also try and visit some other places, maybe a Joann's, not quite sure. So let me know down below if you would be interested in seeing a little series on sock yarns that you can get in a store rather than shopping online or from more expensive places. We will head in now. Perfect time to come shopping for you. Are you so happy to be in the yarn aisle? Okay, so this is like super nerve wracking filming in public. I've never done it before. I don't even film TikToks in public. I don't do any kind of that, <laughs> that stuff. So this is new, but I'm just looking through the yarns that they have and trying to walk around so that my baby doesn't lose her cool. Mostly I'm looking for yarns that are either labeled as sock yarns or... Okay, like I was saying, employees came by, made me real nervous, but basically I'm looking for either yarn that's labeled as sock yarn specifically. I'm looking for anything that's 100% wool or a combination of wool and nylon, because that's typically what you use for socks. The nylon gives it a little bit of elasticity and durability for when it's on the bottom of your feet, so it doesn't just felt automatically and then remain stiff and hard to get on your foot, like for the heel or uh, whatnot that gets a lot of uh, stress. So that's kind of what I'm looking at now. Okay, so if you've heard of Patton's Croy sock yarn, that is probably the most common sock yarn that you'll see in a commercial space like a Michaels or like a Joann's or you know wherever you may buy your yarn that's not a specific yarn store, like a big box store pretty common. I'm actually pretty surprised by how rough it feels to my skin. I mean, it's not super rough, but it's not like a uh, hand-dyed yarn that I've had before. 75-25 wool nylon blend. Okay, pretty good sock yarn. They've got lots of different options. They've got some neutrals, which is really nice if you just need something as like a contrast, but they've also got these marl looking ones, these stripey ones. I think I'm going to grab this one is really calling my name. If you looked at my Instagram feed, that these colors really go with other yarns that I've been working on recently. So I think I might grab one of those. $5.99, not too bad. Let me check the yardage. It's only 50 grams. So this will either make a shorty pair of socks or we'll see how far it goes. I'm gonna try to use it up. So I think that's what I will do. It does kind of look like there's still some striping with the marling. So I'll try to match them up because that's kind of how I like my socks. 
but that's our first one. Oh, another thing that I didn't mention yet as far as buying sock yarn is that you usually want something that's a fingering or a lightweight yarn. Yeah, a super fine yarn. You can also make DK weight socks or worsted weight socks. Super cozy, but I'm in California. I don't need those, so I'm looking mostly for size one yarns. A sock knitting book on clearance next to chunky weight yarn that is clearly not intended for socks. Bingo. So this is the yarn that started this idea of coming to Michael's specifically for sock yarn. And they have it all together, which is nice. Perfect. Okay, this is the yarn that I've used before. Loops and threads. This color will be familiar. The perfect pair. So this is 100 grams. I used this river color previously to make my first ever pair of socks. That was just left over in my stash. Georgia, come back Hi. here. Hi. She's wreaking havoc over there. Hey, Georgia, can I have it? Can you bring the yarn for mama? Uh oh, she's gonna bring me everything. Okay, my time is limited. So yeah, this is a nice soft squishy yarn. I didn't necessarily like some of the striping in that, so I'm gonna pick a couple other colors. This one was one that was catching my eye. Again, $5.99, but it's for 100 grams. 70% acrylic, 23% viscous from bamboo, 7% polyester. So not a lot of natural fiber, but I've liked the socks I've made with it, so I think I'll give it a good honest review. I like a lot of these colors, actually. So we'll grab a couple and we'll see what I decide on. Our little garment, Sarah's left a path of destruction. I've already cleaned it up once. So I'll show you what I decided on. Oh, there she goes again. These are some fun colors. Not sure if I grab all of these. I'll show you when I get home what my haul ends up being, but I may grab them all. I think these are all super cute, super fun, nice and durable yarn from what my experience has been. Pretty plump, so it's been, it was fun to work with for my first pair of socks. So really my only complaint was that I used too big of needle for that first pair and I didn't like a couple of the colors in the stripes. So I hope that I like these better. Hey girly, we shall see. My excuse is that I'll be making gifts. Most of them will probably be for me and my daughter, honestly. But I will try to make some gifts. So we'll see if I grab any the colors I think are good for other people. But I might just grab these ones that make me so happy. All right, and then right next to it, not specifically a sock yarn, but this Woo-like comes in all sorts of colors. That might be a great for like a contrast. You want just a simple color rather than like a tonal or variegated or anything like this is just a solid color. This might work really well for contrast. It's even cheaper. How big is one of these? 100 grams. So this would be great, I think. 85% acrylic, 15% nylon. I looked it up on Ravelry and you can search by yarn and I just looked to see if other people had maybe used this for socks because I thought maybe this would be good, especially because it is fairly similar in composition to the perfect pair socks. I don't actually know the difference between acrylic and nylon other than I think they're both plastic based, but they have different construction methods. So I might grab one of these and like maybe that beautiful mauvey color. Okay, we've got our yarn haul. I'm done with my baby shenanigans. We are headed out of here and I will show you my haul when I get home. Georgia. All right, so my lighting is a little crummy because it is later in the afternoon. Uh, husband is with the baby and I am here to show you my little yarn haul. So like I mentioned, it was a buy one, get one 50% off sale at Michael's. So I made sure to get four skeins. I had one skein of cotton yarn I needed for a upcoming pattern design. So I got that, but then that left me three skeins of sock yarn. I showed you in the store, there were lots that I was eyeing and honestly there were lots of good colors that if I had a specific project, I totally could have snagged and used. But I had a lot of self-restraint because I'm trying not to buy a ton of yarn. I'll add these socks to the pile, I guess. So I showed all of these to you in the store. I'm not quite sure how much footage I'll have. It'll be good, so we'll just do a like little brief overview of everything I got. So for $5.99, and I'm just, I'll just tell you the regular price. $5.99 Patton's Croy Socks. This is the color, copper colors. Like I said, in the store it is a 50 gram skein, so either makes shorty socks or will definitely need to be used in conjunction with 
a second ball or a different color yarn in order to make a full pair of socks. Pretty common sock yarn labeled for socks. It is 75-25 wool and nylon blend. And then also for $5.99, but in a 100 gram game, it's perfect pair by Loops and Threads. This is the color I decided to get. It is called Secret Garden. Got these corals and grays. It's perfect for my daughter, like a peachy pink. It's one of the colors that I've been doing a lot for her. And so this would actually match her nursery really well. Match colors of what I've enjoyed. Like I said, it's a 100 gram skein, so you could definitely make an entire pair of adult socks with this. There's plenty. And this is a 70% acrylic, 23% viscous from bamboo, 7% polyester blend. It's really plump. So fun to squish. Towards the end of our trip, my daughter was going on a rampage, pulling all the yarn down from the shelves and running away. She's one, and so she's all over the place. So I picked this one up really quickly, but it's, I think I said woo-like in the store. It's wool-like because it's supposed to simulate wool, which like totally makes sense. But for some reason, I just wasn't thinking about that. This color is called rose. It's this beautiful like mauvey pink. It's a little hard to see accurately on camera, but it's so beautiful. It is 85% acrylic, 15% nylon. Very soft and squishy. And this is a 100 gram skein. Oh, but I see it's really fine, like more fine than most sock yarns. It is 678 yards in 100 grams. That is massive. Usually it's in the 400 to 400 and like 30 yards per 100 grams. This is like 200 plus yards more. So there's a ton of yarn in here. It's very lightweight. It's probably considered a light fingering. I would have to test and compare, but we'll see how my gauge is with this. Cause it might be a bit different than I'm used to for socks. Those are the skeins of sock yarn I got. Those are the three different brands I saw at Michael's and we will test them out. I will figure out kind of what I want to do. Maybe I'll just make a couple pairs of baby socks <laughs> to compare them and so it's a faster make, but I will take you along with me when I decide my plan after I swatch and work on these. Hello, so I'm here today with my sock yarns potential sock yarns, I guess. And I have my computer open in front of me and I think I know what I'm going to do with these yarns to kind of test them out, do a little swatching almost. Um, I guess make three different toddler socks and then compare, contrast. I'm gonna try to finish the pairs too, but I'll definitely start with making one of each of the yarns and then we'll test them out on my toddler and kind of see how they hold up. My impressions on them while I'm using the yarn, after I finish making the socks, with wear and tear over time, kind of how they do. So that's kind of my plan and I have this pattern in front of me. It's called the Magic Heel Socks. It's by the Autumn Acorn and I've heard that this is a really good pattern for making socks that could fit a variety of feet when you don't quite know foot measurements of the recipient that you're giving it to. So if you're giving as a gift or it can be really good if you're making for someone whose feet are changing like a toddler <laughs> so that they can wear the socks for longer. And basically you make a tube sock, but you knit the heel differently so it can go over your heel. But as your foot gets longer, then that heel placement is able to shift a little bit. Whereas for an afterthought heel, there's absolutely no shifting. And same thing with a heel flap and gusset. I bought this pattern on Ravelry. It's only $3. I, from what I've heard, it's really worthwhile. So I'm going to take a look at this pattern and we are going to get started. Okay, so it looks like this pattern is only written for adult sizes. That's okay. I'm looking at a couple other sock patterns. I made a pair of socks for Georgia that fit her right now where I use I think 40 stitches around so I'm going to go with that <laughs> and then I'm just gonna look at the rye light pattern by Tin Can Knits which is a free pattern just for some guidance on like length of leg length of foot kind of things just so I have an idea and then I'm going to adapt the magic kill pattern to fit a cast on of I think I'm gonna go with 44 just so she has some room to grow into it so I'm gonna cast on 44 stitches follow the magic heel pattern with that adjustment 
and then look to the Rylite pattern for length measurements for foot and leg. Okay, so I wanted to share. I have completed one cuff. I decided to do 10 rounds. Easy number. I'm just gonna write down how many rows I do for the cuff, leg, heel, foot, all that stuff. I'm gonna try to make not only this sock equal to the second sock that I'll make, but also I think it would be really helpful to do the exact same sock recipe for these yarns as well. And that way I can compare them a lot better as far as gauge, how they feel, how they wear, etc., etc. But anyway, so I've been working up this. I decided to try the Patton's Croy first. And I remember saying in the store that it was a little bit scratchy. And yeah, it's definitely not a super wash yarn. You can see it's kind of fuzzy and got all sorts of like, I wouldn't call it a halo. It's just a little bit scruffy, but it's actually really nice to work up. It feels really sturdy and it feels like it'll be really, really warm. And that's the wool for you. <laughs> it's actually been pretty enjoyable to work up. Not, not really scratchy though. I definitely need to keep my hands lotioned up. Definitely different than working up a super wash yarn, but not bad at all. Not even like, I wouldn't even call it rustic. It's not quite that far even. I think it's about to do like a color change. So I'll get to the stockinette part of the leg. The thing I love about sock knitting is you can bring it anywhere. So we're here at the park. Sock done, we'll try it on. Your foot is really sweaty. There we go. Yay! The sock will work. Right, so I wanted to check in. I finished my second sock. So now I've got both. Yay! Sorry, it's dark, so the lighting is not great. And I've got my light over here, but I've got both. The color varies so much, so they definitely don't match, but I'm surprised by how well I feel like they go together, even though they're totally different. So yeah, I'm really happy with how they turned out. I have not woven in my ends. I'll do that right before I block and then I'll block all six socks together and then snip my ends after I block them. Like I said, I've really enjoyed working with this yarn. It's really sturdy, definitely feels a little bit thicker than what I'm used to for a fingering weight sock yarn and not necessarily scratchy, but definitely catches on itself a little bit more. It's a bit less slippy. I really enjoyed working with this. I definitely want to work with it more. I've already bought another skein of yarn. I'm gonna use it for heels, toes, and cuffs for another sock, I think. That is my first pair, woohoo, from this sock knitting challenge. I'm going to start my next pair of socks tonight, and I'm going to start using this the perfect pair and this color again is called secret garden and i love all the peaches and grays the original socks i made with this yarn before that i've tried it's in the colorway river but there's a lot more variation this is really just peach white gray and so it'll work up a little differently i'm really looking forward to it i know that i enjoy working with this yarn now that i have more experience working with sock yarns i wonder if my opinion about it will change but it is very elastic, so I just need to, I think, make sure to watch my gauge. I think make sure to watch my gauge. When I'm working with it, but it's really smooth and pretty sturdy. I mean, like I didn't have issues with any breaking or anything. So that is my next pair of socks, and I'll check in with you later. Oh, before I go, let me tell you what I ended up doing for my sock formula. I'm gonna do exactly the same thing for all six socks. So then we can more clearly see gauge and how the actual fibers work up. Just trying to lessen the variables. So I cast it on 44 stitches. I modified the magic heel pattern because there's no toddler size. So I cast on 44 stitches. I ended up doing 10 rounds in the cuff, 
25 rounds in the leg, 25 rounds in the heel, and 25 rounds in the foot because I didn't want to have to figure out making any changes. So I thought it would be easiest to do 25 rounds for those three sections. And then I did a toe, just a, is a square toe, a wedge toe. Anyway, I decreased every other round about halfway. And then for the last half, I just decrease every round so that kind of rounds out the toe a little bit more and that's personally how I've liked my toe that's my sock recipe for these socks I will make sure to put it down in the description like I said this is a paid for pattern so I'm not gonna include any like specific stitches but I will make sure to include the round counts that I did for her size and she's wearing like a size five toddler size right now five five to six I think so that's kind of where we're at Right, good morning so I'm still in my pajamas we're just waking up but I wanted to do this update before I forgot so I actually just finished the first sock it flew off my needles first of all I love these stripes so cute definitely cuter sorry if you can hear like there's a little bit more in the background even though it's February I love these stripes way more than the other colorway I'd use for my very first socks I'll make sure to pop up a picture they worked up super fast I just read <laughs> I read like half a book and finished these last night and it was so nice. It was like a really relaxing evening. It was exactly what I needed. And so that's what I worked on. My Kitchener stitch turned out a little funky. There was like a random gap, so I must have missed something somehow, but I stitched that up with an end so it looks fine. Knitting experience, this was so smooth. To me, it was smoother, it was softer, it was plusher, it was smoother and less splitty than even working with like a super wash sock yarn from an indie dyer so super smooth it was really nice flew off the needles it's a really elastic squishy base so like i said i needed to redo the cuff and even now the cuff is not as stretchy as the rest of it which is fine it'll still totally work the like thread itself is really stretchy oh my gosh you can totally see i really enjoy working with this the very first pair of socks i ever made were from the same yarn and it was my first pair of socks, and so I was just trying to, you know, work through it. But this was awesome. I definitely want to do this again. It's called Loops and Threads Perfect Pair. Sorry, Georgia's right here playing. She did not want me to put her down, so she might be making some noise too, in addition to the lawnmower outside. So hopefully this footage is okay. It is a vlog style, so you're getting what you're getting. I finished one sock already. And comparing it to patents, there's definitely a difference. You can even see there, size-wise, definitely different. And I use the same exact stitch counts, the same exact row counts, and definitely a different sock. And I could feel it when I was working on it. Patterns was a little bit more sturdy. Georgia, you're shaking the table. Patterns is a little bit more sturdy, bit thicker. This is on the thinner side. Georgia, she's playing with the socks. <laughs> oh, you're gonna take that one too? Mm. Yeah, yeah, are you playing with the socks? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey dear. Gonna show them the socks mama made? The loops and threads, perfect pair, definitely has a smaller gauge inherently than the patterns. I'd have to compare wraps per inch just to see exactly where they fall along the spectrum of being a finger in white yard, supposedly. You can trust the label, but also you don't have to trust the label. It's okay to decide for yourself what thickness it is. This might be more like a sport weight yarn. I don't know, we shall see. Like I said, I'm just gonna make all six socks and then I'm gonna weave in ends a little bit, block them all together, see how kind of things go after blocking, maybe do like a day of wearing, trial run or whatnot. They're still pretty stretchy, so even though they're a lot smaller than the patents, they'll still totally work. It's crazy to see the difference. 
such a difference. I do like that for this, there's 100 grams. I do like that you can make a whole bunch of little socks or you can make two really large socks with this. Whereas for patents, I basically only had enough to make these two child socks and I have a little bit more, I'll have to measure it. You definitely need two to make adult socks. Thank you. And so it's just more expensive, which is okay because it's not too bad, but it's all preference and we're all just comparing them and talking about the differences. Yeah, this sock worked up in like an evening, a long evening, spent reading as well, but it worked up in an evening super fast. So I'm gonna get started on the second sock. Georgia, you're interrupting my video. All right, we are down to the last sock. It is go time. Let's try to finish this strong and get done with this. just finished my very last sock. Ah! So time to weave in some ends and just a little bit and then start doing our compare and contrast. All right, so I have some news. I finished blocking and trimming ends and weaving them in and all that good stuff for all three pairs of socks. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit about each different pair, the yarn I was working with, kind of my thoughts and feelings before blocking, after blocking, overall, to just kind of compare and contrast these yarns and how they worked as a sock yarn. So the first pair that I made were these socks from Patton's Croy Sock Yarn FX line in the colorway Copper Colors. Like I said, I use the same pattern, the Magic Heel socks for all these socks. And I wanted to compare kind of how everything would work out. So this yarn to work with was way more sturdy and tough than I am used to. I have only made socks previously out of superwash merino wool yarns. And they would have nylon in it, so it wasn't just wool. But because they were superwash, they were really slick and smooth and soft to work with. And so this was really different. I think after blocking, they softened up a little bit, but they're honestly not that bad. In the store, I was like, oh wow, these are really scratchy. But they're not scratchy, they're not uncomfortable. They feel a little bit scratchy on my face, but not in a way that I wouldn't Eat, wear like a hat and be really warm and sturdy. It's been eye-opening I guess that in the store I thought it felt scratchy and then working with it I'm like oh it's not really that scratchy. It actually was really enjoyable to work with. Definitely was a thicker yarn and so these socks turned out bigger than all my other socks with the same stitch counts. It was a 75-25 merino wool but it wasn't a super wash wool. I'm pleasantly surprised at this. These socks turned out bigger, the yarn itself is thicker, it's sturdier, so there wasn't a lot of elasticity to it when I was knitting with it. The final product is definitely stretchy. It's definitely stiffer than some other yarns, and that's okay. These are definitely workhorse yarn. I can see Georgia, my daughter, wearing these inside boots in the snow. <laughs> for like an entire winter. I'll definitely keep you updated on Instagram the long-term longevity of these socks. I wanted to get this video out, so I didn't necessarily test them long-term, but tried them on. They fit well, they're just thick and sturdy. They're still fingering weight socks, but definitely lean more toward the sport weight, I would say, from working with it. But I really enjoyed it. I love these colors. I would definitely want to buy some more yarn in this. I think it'd be so fun maybe for Andrew Mowry's Curio Socks as the color changing color. Might be fun to do. It's surprising I actually didn't have very much yarn left over. So I wrote down and all these yarns have different price points too. So I'll just remind you. So the Patton's Croy Sock Yarn was $5.99 when it wasn't on sale. 
for 50 grams. I only had 13 grams left after knitting those socks for Georgia. And she's a toddler. Yes, I had 44 stitches. That is not very much yarn left over. It's definitely a scrap. That's very different compared to the other yarns. Let me talk about the next pair of socks. This is Perfect Pair from Loops and Threads. Super cute. I am so glad I have leftover of this because I want to make my own. Ooh, one of them got stretched out. I think that was George's doing. These are so cute. The colorway is called Secret Garden as a reminder. Self-striping and like I said, same stitch count, same round count and they turned out very different size from the patterns. But this yarn is very elastic, very stretchy and bounces back and so it was a little trickier to work with honestly compared to patterns when I was used to that switching to this I had to do my cast on a second time to get it really stretchy just because I was pulling the yarn too tight when I was casting on and so it didn't have the stretch it needed to get onto her foot the right way but I'm happy with it now I just had to keep that in mind when I was knitting to not knit too tightly and pull at the yarn too much it's very sturdy and I can tell from my personal experience working with this yarn before my very first pair of socks was with this yarn it will wear really well and it is machine wash and dryable which is really nice for gifts and for kids to not even have to worry about a wash routine but just throwing them in the washer and dryer and they'll come out just the same i've had no issues with my other socks so that is a really really good bonus since these are wool <laughs> you definitely need to hand wash them and be really gentle with them you can felt them if you are not careful so definitely hand wash and wet block like you would any other a fragile knit but these totally machine wash and dryable which is really nice I will say that this yarn is $5.99 as well for a skein but it is a hundred grams in the skein you get twice as much knitting for the same price and obviously there are different reasons to get different yarns but that is really nice I have 80 grams left of this skein so definitely enough to make myself a good pair of socks like not even shorties but I can make good pair of socks. I might even match them if I want to, but I don't know, these are really fun how they don't match. They're like completely opposite. Like the gray stripes are in the same spot, but the other colors are not. So that's kind of fun. I don't know. I always like my socks to match, but maybe I can break out of that with another pair like this. I'm really excited to make another pair for myself because I really love that colorway <laughs> and seeing it worked up, I really, really like it. And then my final pair, I made out of loops and threads yarn again I think it's Michael's in-house brand but I used wool like and they turned out about the same size as the perfect pair this color is called rose definitely it's more of a purpley color the lighting is not phenomenal here this yarn oh my goodness so soft to, to work with like I could have this on my face and my neck all freaking day all day all day long so that was really enjoyable to work with it was so soft and like silky so maybe depending on how comfortable you are with knitting you might want to use bamboo or wood needles i am fairly comfortable with my metal needles and i was still able to knit without an issue a little bit more splitty than this yarn but this yarn is really tightly plied i didn't have any splitting with that this yarn is so beautiful and it's really I, w I was thinking that it was maybe a light fingering, but size-wise, it turned out just like this pair. And so I don't think it's light fingering. I think it's just a really, really lightweight yarn, really airy. So it has 678 yards to 100 grams. Like that is 50% more yards than any other skein of finger weight yarn I've ever bought. Like that is a big deal. That is ton more yarn but I don't think it would necessarily affect your gauge too much I would not consider this light fingering after working it up I did enjoy this quite a bit my only concern is the elasticity of it so if you'll see I'll pull and stretch it kind of stays open it kind of goes back but definitely not as elastic cuff just kind of sits there so not sure how these will wear Generally, softer yarns will pill a lot more or have like the little bits on it more. And I already am seeing a layer of halo that's like starting to form. It's not really a halo, it's just the fibers kind of coming up. And so I expect that to happen with this. I'm not sure how sturdy these socks will be long term. But again, I will let you know on my Instagram and 
probably on my blog as well. I kind of do a follow up and let you know how these socks do. These are also totally a vegan yarn as well. 85% acrylic, 15% nylon. So they've got the nylon that should strengthen it and then acrylic. So it is machine wash and dryable as well. Various options. So it's really interesting to think about. Patton's Croy, there are self-striping colorways. There are these really interesting FX colorways. There are some neutrals that would be really good for contrast colors or main colors of socks for color work or something. Lots of options for that. For the perfect pair of socks, it's all self-striping. Lots of fun colors, which is really, really interesting to work with. And I do really like this color right in particular. These are vegan. And the wool-like had only solids. They had a small selection, maybe like a half a dozen to a dozen colors. Also vegan. Kind of options for everybody and honestly, I'm not sure how much I trust this yarn to be a good long-term sock, but it definitely worked up well. I think working this up, this would be really good for a garment. I think I will get more of this color because, oh my goodness, so cheap. It was $3.49 for 100 grams. I have 86 grams left of this. There's so much yarn here like oh my gosh so i think i may get like one more skein of this and then i could make myself a top <laughs> which is crazy to think about so lightweight and so i definitely want to get more of this in order to make something like a garment maybe i could make a garment for georgia out of just the skein i'll have to look yardage wise and see what i can do with it i think this would make a really good lightweight soft garment i think that this yarn, the Perfect Pair, is a really good sock yarn, especially if you are vegan or have a wool allergy. The fiber content of this one, just to double check, 70% acrylic, 23% viscous from bamboo, and 7% polyester. So there is some plant-based fiber in here, some bamboo. It's got a nice sheen to it, a processed viscose. I think these are really, really great option for self-striping socks that are durable, that will be really good in a washer and dryer so they make a great gift great for kids super fun i think this is great but just remember that it's really an elastic fiber so don't pull it too tight when you're knitting with it and i think that patton's croy is really a workhorse sock yarn that can be a really good staple in your stash i definitely turned my nose up at patton's at first because of how i thought it felt but then after working it up i realized it really wasn't very toothy or wooly. The right amount of wool that I feel like this is sturdy and warm and will work really hard and wear really well, but it was a joy to work with. And even with dry winter hands, it didn't catch or anything. I really enjoyed it. I think this is a great option if you like working with more woolier wools and maybe you can't afford to buy something from a local yarn store or from a local dyer, that this would be a great option. And this could also kind of fill in the gaps in your stash as far as different neutral colors or striping socks that you may want to make for other people that would take care of their socks. Because definitely hand wash only. Super exciting looking at all these yarns. It was actually a really fun experiment to go looking for these yarns in the store and to pick them out and try them and kind of compare and contrast and see. I really like all the outcomes that I have. One yarn, I'm not quite sure how it'll do long term, but I think that they will work just fine for socks for my toddler <laughs> for the time being. And it was really fun to try two different yarns I've never tried before and just kind of see and compare. I think they all have a good place within your yarn stash depending on what you want to make or how you want to use them, depending on who you're knitting for, whether it's for yourself or someone who knows how to care for hand knits or whether it's for a child or for a family or friend that can rely on a washer and dryer. I think that these are all really great options and I really enjoyed this little experiment. So let me know down below if you thought this was interesting, which yarn you may want to pick up next time you're in the area of a Michaels. And let me know if you want to see more videos like this, comparing and contrasting possible sock yarns from places like maybe Joanne Fabrics. I'm interested because they have quite a range of yarns. There are some yarns there that maybe I could try or maybe other 
big brands that you can get online like Knit Picks or Ho Hobie Yarn. Hobie Yarn. Hobie Yarn. <laughs> So there are options for other places. So let me know down below if you want to see more options like this, where you can kind of see some sock yarns compared and contrasted. Just a reminder, make sure to like and comment on this video. Help spread the word and grow my channel. You can subscribe, hit the bell notification down below to be notified every Friday when I post a new video. And I will see you again next Friday. Bye.